What is going on everyone? Leon checking in and we're at it again with another video. In today's video, we'll be unboxing and reviewing the Gravistar Mars Pro Shark 14 Incarnation Bluetooth speaker. Now this is a promising kit because it features a sci-fi dystopian look, promising speaker performance, and small DIY assembly for a hands-on project. Now this video is featured on the futuristic gear playlist so you can find information related to this topic quickly and easily. As always, we only feature products or services I buy, use, or am interested in. Now you can find this item and related accessories at the Amazon storefront links in the description below. Don't have time to watch the whole video? We're now a podcast you can find on multiple platforms by searching for Pixels Cracked. And if you are listening to this on a podcast, you can find the more detailed video and YouTube channel by searching for Pixels Cracked as well. All things said, let's go ahead and get into it. So here we are with the unboxing of the Gravistar Mars Pro Shark 14. This unit ships in a two-tone black and gray package with comic book design elements of the Gravistar and its specs. Mars Pro Shark 14 is also compatible with the Gravistar Mars Pro USB-C charging base, which we'll be unboxing and reviewing in a future video. Opening the crate is done by pulling on the tab and flipping open the lids which reveals a Gravistar artistic cardboard insert, which is worthy of a picture frame. Underneath this is a foam insert with Gravistar logo engraven. Once the foam insert is removed, we have access to the Mars Pro Shark 14, USB-C to USB-A power cable, USB-C to auxiliary cable, and product information. The Shark 14 features a gray, red, and black livery with battle-worn accent. The last item in the crate is the accessories package, which includes tools for installation. Upgrades include Gatling gun with adhesive cover, bullet bar, bullet box, shield with magnetic cover, left and right upper shell handles, hexagonal socket screws, Allen wrench, and Phillips screwdriver. Next, we have DIY assembly. Now, you can use the Shark 14 as is without the accessories, but the whole point of this speaker is the coolness factor. So let's get to work. So what I'm going to install first will be the left and right handles. Now, according to the directions, they're going to ask us to install the upper shell first, but it's actually already installed. That's this whole piece here. We actually have to remove it to install those handles and removal is pretty simple. It's going to be these two Allen head screws and we're going to use the included Allen wrench. Now I already loosened these just to make the video a little bit faster here so i'm just going to remove them pull them out and this is where things get really cool if you're looking for a little diy project that's exactly what's going on here now before we install the handles i just want to point out the shell is made out of high quality material it's actually made of metal so that means that it's heavy and it's cold to the touch which adds to the overall effect of this whole kit now, as you can see, I've taken the shell and I've placed it inside the styrofoam that comes in the packaging. And this is a good tip for three reasons. First, the styrofoam actually holds the shell upright on its own, which means that you don't have to hold it while installing the handle using the small screws. Now, when it comes to the small screws, the styrofoam has these cutouts. It actually serves as a tray for those screws. They're really small. You don't want to lose them. And third, the styrofoam protects the shell so that it doesn't get scratched when trying to do any of this part of the process. Now I've completed the installation of the handles as seen here, but for demonstration purposes, the short small screws, they go into these four spots on the shell. Now aligning the four small screws with these handles is a little bit tricky, which is why I couldn't demonstrate it on camera. What I would recommend is getting a screw started on the back of each handle. And then what you may have to do is somewhat pull on the handle a little bit forward here so that the hole in the handle will align with the screw and then you can screw everything together. And of course, this is all hard to do too because those screws are short as well. Now that we have the handles installed on that upper shell, we can take it and place it on top of the Shark 14. 
And as you've seen previously, we had Allen head screws hold in that top shell and we're going to leave them out. And I believe the reason being is because we're going to use those holes to install the gun and the shield. Next, we're going to turn the Shark 14 around so that we can access the back of it to install the bullet box. Now, you may be thinking because we have these handles installed, we could grab onto them, but I would recommend not doing that only because, again, those screws are really short. I don't know if over time those handles might pull out or the threaded inserts may get stripped. So I would actually grab the whole unit here. And remember, the top shell is not secured by the Allen screws. So you want to make sure that you don't actually just pull off the top shell. So we're going to flip this around until we see the back of the Shark 14. And that's where our bullet box is going to go. So here I have the bullet box and this is going to be the proper way to install it. And it looks like it should just snap into place. So I rotated the Shark 14 so that you can get a slightly better angle. So we're going to take the bullet box and line it up here. And then we should be able to just press that into place. And that is a tight fit. I was a little worried there, uh, but it snaps into place there and it's actually really secure. So it doesn't look like it's going to fall out. Next, we have the shield. Now the shield is made of all plastic material. So it's not going to be as high quality as that top shell, but it looks really cool. And you can see we've got that worn rugged look continuing on here. Now, this is going to be held on with an Allen screw that's included in the packaging, but in order to install it, we need to remove the center cap, and that's actually held on with a magnet, and that magnet is actually pretty strong. The only way I've been able to remove it is by taking the Phillips screwdriver and pushing on the cap there, and then the cap comes off, and you can see that our Allen screw is going to go right in there. We're going to take that, drop that right into place nice tight fit and we'll put the cap on after because of course we have to screw this in to our gravistar using the included allen wrench so i'm going to grab my shield here and my allen wrench and as i'm putting this on i have to say this project is pretty interesting i had no idea that this was going to be this involved but it's very enjoyable it's it's not a very difficult diy project uh, but it's still pretty fascinating you feel like you're putting together you know this war defense robot and it plays bluetooth music and it's just overall amazing now this shield you can kind of get it to where you want it to go according to the directions they do recommend that it's more uh, angled up and back pretty much like this and then you can secure it tighten it down pretty good and then we could take our magnetic cap we just want to line it up and then we can drop this in place here and this is a really strong magnet and there we go we got our shield on and then we have the Gatling gun install. And this thing is absolutely massive. If you're landing on Mars and you come across this vicious looking thing, you need to hide immediately. Uh, cover yourself in dirt, dig a hole, hide. You better hope this thing doesn't have heat sinking. It's end of story. That's, that's all you need to know. So we're going to take our Allen head screw. We're going to place it through the gun. And then we're going to screw the complete assembly onto the Shark 14. And this is the final screw that's also going to secure that top shell. So the shell is actually going to be secured on there. For reference, that first screw that we put in uh, that's holding on the top shell, that's what also holds that shield that we just installed. Now, there is a cover here that goes on the Gatling gun. It's this one here. It, it's really shiny looking and it's really only one time use because it's secured with 3M adhesive. I'm going to actually leave it off because I feel like it gives this whole unit a rougher look like it's actually been through a battlefield and maybe the cover got blown off. Uh, it just looks a little more rugged. Plus, if you ever have to access this screw to tighten it, you don't have to pull that cover off. It just gives it a whole more rougher look it, it adds a story element to it 
Now that we have the Gatling gun installed, we can also install the ominous bullet chain. And this is what feeds all the ammunition to that Gatling gun. So again, if you see this, you better run and you better run fast. You better hide, take cover. Uh, so we are going to install this. We have this opened end here. I call it the alligator mouth. That's gonna go into the bullet box. And then we have this other end that's going to go into the Gatling gun. And I imagine this is going to be a tight install because I've already kind of tried it. So unfortunately I won't be able to show this on camera how I installed it, but I will show you the end result. So here we have the bullet chain installed. And just to give some kind of feedback, this side went into the bullet box fairly easy. This side, it took a little bit more effort. I had to actually do a little more wiggling. It wasn't really difficult, but it would have been hard to demonstrate on camera since I would have been shaking everything quite a bit to, to get that bullet chain into the Gatling gun. So now that the Shark 14 is fully assembled, suited up and ready for war, it's time to get it into its attack position. Now you can see that this unit has three legs on it and the feet actually articulate here and it gets it into what I call war mode. So I'm actually going to articulate each one at a time. And this is what makes this whole unit look a bit more aggressive. So you can see we are armed and ready to go. The Shark 14 features three buttons, two LED indicators, and a volume adjustment touch area. The buttons from left to right function for lights, power on, off, and Bluetooth. Now on a unit like this, we may wonder why touch buttons weren't used, but the physical buttons are more practical when using the Gravistar in dim conditions with its lighting effects. The left LED indicator functions as Bluetooth status and blinks when disconnected, and the right indicator functions as battery status and flashes when level is critical. The light button features three modes. A long press turns the lights off or on. A single click switches between six color options. And a double click switches between always on mode and breathing gradient mode. Unfortunately, the one lighting effect which seems to be missing here is music pulsation. And then we have that on off button which has some cool sci-fi sound effects. So if we press and hold it, it'll turn the device off. And then if we press and hold it again, it'll turn the device on. And then we have the button to the far right, which again is Bluetooth. Now, when turning on the Shark 14, if a device isn't paired to it, it automatically enters Bluetooth pairing mode, which is indicated by that left LED blinking. Now, the Bluetooth button is still helpful because it assists in resetting the Bluetooth and also deleting Bluetooth records. And then we have the illuminated volume adjustment touch area, a pro when using in dim conditions. Operation is done simply by touching on the area or touching on the area and dragging your finger. And as you can see, this works really well. Now returning to that power on off button, it also serves as a play pause button. Next we have sound quality and sound quality on the Gravistar Pro is similar to Google Nest Audio when it comes to volume. You can also watch and feel how the Shark 14 Pro works. Bass is about what you would expect from a device of this size, though a bit more would be nice. When it comes to battery, Shark Pro 14 features a 2000 milliamp hour lithium unit, which is capable of an estimated 15 hour runtime. Now I haven't had 15 hours to run this unit yet, but I did run it for the complete writing of the script and for portions of this video, which was at least a minimum of a few hours. Now as expected, there were no issues here. And then we have charging, which is performed via USB-C port underneath the Shark 14. Now as you can see in this video, I have a USB-C cable plugged into that port, and I can tell you it's nearly impossible to do without picking up the Shark 14 itself. And if you have all the accessories installed as I do, it becomes a bit burdensome. You feel there is a risk that you may drop the whole kit, which is something you obviously don't want to do. Now, when the device is plugged in and charging, you can still use it for playing music and switching colors, but you can't enable breathing mode, it seems. 
Now, when it actually comes to charging, I would recommend the Gravistar USB-C charging base, which again, we will be unboxing and reviewing in a future video. And the only reason I think I'm going to be recommending it is because it looks like it uses magnetic technology. So you would simply take your Shark 14, place it on that base. You wouldn't have to worry about a cable. Charging would just start automatically because of the charging magnets. So final thoughts. Overall, I really like this. I think this is really cool and it's perfect for the sci-fi comic book junkie. Everything seems well put together and of good material and it looks really cool. Now, what I also like about this, which I wasn't really expecting, is that we have a small DIY project here and it was actually a good time putting this all together. I feel like I actually built a small miniature war defense robot. This is perfect for the gamer. You've got all these LEDs. I could see this going on a gaming setup. It, it's just perfect there. It would find its home on a gaming rig or gaming area, if you will. And then the speaker, it works pretty good. I'm impressed by it. It is pretty much what I was expecting for a device of this size. It gets pretty loud. Uh, just wish there was a little bit more bass, but overall it works really well. The whole thing works really well as a complete kit. Now there are only two things I'm somewhat worried about, and that is the shield and the gun. They have those Allen screws, and I can see them coming loose over time, so we may have to tighten them. It's not a deal breaker. It's kind of what you would expect with something like this that plays music and it has bass and things vibrate. Things may come loose over time and tighten up those Allen screws isn't hard to do. So that is it for today's video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, please leave a like. If you're watching this on YouTube and have any questions or comments, as always drop those down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Now there are three ways you can support the content. The first way is to click on the Amazon storefront link in the description below. There you'll find items that I have bought or would like to buy and anything you buy from the storefront does support the content. The next way to support us is just by sharing this content with someone who might enjoy it or find it useful. And the last way to show your support is just by clicking the subscribe and follow button. Now liking and subscribing are important. Those are ways to vote on whether you like the video or the podcast. Liking and subscribing are also important for new viewers and listeners. If new viewers and listeners see likes and subscribers, they're going to think that the content is helpful, worth watching, and listening to. So that is pretty much it. And until next time, Leon checking out. Yeah.